We have finally made it to December. I can't believe we've almost reached the end. Like I said, a lot of football to be played. There are 10 shows left. We've barely crossed the midway point. Oh boy, so much for relaxing around the holidays. You know what? That's fine, because this week is stacked. We've got the Vikings this week who can clinch the NFC North with a win and a Lions loss against the Jets. The Titans are looking to bounce back against the best team in the NFC, and San Francisco will take on the Dolphins, whose roster, believe it or not, is actually made up of 60% former 49ers. Okay, actually, Cynthia is the math whiz, so don't look that up. Just take my word on it. Game Day View presented by Mercedes-Benz starts now. everybody <laughs> was that at the combine oh my goodness why are we that playing every that week? every I'm show such a good mood. i'm ready to go let's go yeah, welcome ready. to game day view greg rosenthal <laughs> cynthia freeland patrick claybon and i am rachel <laughs> bonetta welcome to week 13 guys are we in week 13 already it is crazy <laughs> uh and let me tell you okay it's getting tight atop the leaderboard on this show and with a couple stray bonds in the Woo. mix this week, plus maybe one or two lonettas. I'm just trying to speak the uh, me wearing the crown into existence. I'm catching up, okay? <laughs> I don't want to freak you guys it's out. Been. It's amazing. I'm going to give a lot of credit to all of us. Yes, we yeah. are pretty oh, good. There we go. No from, more animosity from Greg. I love this. This is a new Greg. No, you're just going to do it on the commercial yeah, bike, right? Yeah, that's when I'm behind. Um, okay, let's kick things off with Dolphins, Niners. Guys, we've got so many good games this weekend. Uh, and after working together for 14 seasons, Kyle Shanahan and Mike McDaniel are on opposite sidelines. They made two Super Bowls together with the Falcons and the 49ers and have two of the three longest active Ooh. winning streaks Heading into week 13, I keep hearing this game being referred to as the chess match. Uh, Greg, the desert likes the home team. Niners by three and a half. Yeah, nothing like? gets you ready for football like calling it chess. a chess match. <laughs> Let's between go. Two relatively diminutive men. Uh, not that I'm <laughs> one to talk. I'm going 49ers. I was back and forth on this all you week. You were. I had the Dolphins. I think they're a better team, but they're missing Teron Armstead and Austin Jackson. They're starting tackles. But I love how Tua Tungavailoa is playing, and I think he'll keep it close. I think he'll keep it closer than three and a half. We used to do this show with Andrew Hawkins, an amazing football mind. And he says in Kyle Shanahan's system, and that's Mike McDaniel's system, there are right answers on every play. And the thing I love about Tua is he gets to the right answer mm. so quickly. Nice. This is his third read right here. One, two, three, and then it's a quick release. Fancy work with the ball, you know, where he hides it. Great on play action. And they didn't tell us Tua could do a little playmaking, and he can right here. Mm. This improvising is what Jimmy Garoppolo can't do. I think he gets to his second, his third read in this system even faster than Jimmy Garoppolo. So they're better at quarterback. They keep it closer than three and a half. Where's the butt? But those missing tackles are massive. Cynthia's been telling me that for years. You're without your missing tackles. You're playing a great pass rush. Then I had to change it at the last second. Literally minutes it? ago. Yeah, it was Dolphins. Moments. 49. Yeah, moments ago changed his pick. Well, I only have a one-point win for the Niners, okay. so I'm even more of that. Was this our remember last year? You're threading the needle, baby. Threading that needle, baby. I, I'm, you're, you're threading it like by just a tiny bit. I'm doing it by one point. So I have 24 to 23 in favor of the Niners. It does actually come down to those tackles not necessarily being there. We don't know about Teron Armstead for sure, but. When I look to see the difference making, so if the Dolphins are to upset the Niners, how will it happen? Well, it's both Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, especially after the catch. These two are really at the top of not just the NFL, but like next-gen stats since they started tracking, which was 2016, and their ability to earn yards after the catch over expected. These are the types of things where you're just making even more of a play out of something that was already giving you a good opportunity. So when I'm looking at not just Tua, I'm going to also compliment these guys in the past catching game because they all work together to make each other better so if they're going to upset the Niners or they're gonna keep it really really close like I have it that'll be how yeah there's two really really good yak teams and as much as we all want to thread the needle uh, everybody's gonna see the graphic and it's just gonna be you guys don't like the dog we love the Dolphins we do I, I love the Dolphins they're a really fun team but it pains me to do so uh, but I have to take the team that doesn't have to traverse <clears throat> the entire lower 48 and play mm. on the road 
and play against this offense where Christian McCaffrey not listed on the injury report. Uh, Miami's defense is 10th at stopping the run, but since he's good to go, I think we see his full repertoire as a receiver. Miami is down around 27% in terms of pressure percentage, so more time for Jimmy to distribute the ball to the Yak Bros, Greg Rosenthal is right. We're making Pay attention it a thing. to him. It is a thing. I didn't think it was, but I looked yeah, it up. Yeah, they are the Yak Bros. They are the Yak I've been Bros. Come on. They call themselves the Yak Bros. And, and I want to reiterate what Patrick says. We do love the Dolphins on this show. Once upon a time, Greg even did the Jalen Waddle Waddle at, at some point. I'm not going to make you do it. Oh, no, that's just, I'm not that gonna was make you different. Do it. I didn't pick. That was a different version. I, I didn't the, like I it as that much. that didn't happen. I didn't like it as much. <laughs> uh, I think it's time for a meme alert. And we've got a new sound this time. Oh. Wait for Meme it. alert. <laughs> <laughs> That's Greg's kids, ladies and gentlemen. I love That's that. the cutest thing I've ever heard in my life. Can we do it again? Can we do it again? <laughs> oh my God, we got multiple meme alerts. Just put it on. Good job, like, Walker and Ellis. Put it on repeat. Uh, 49ers 24 to 20. Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, I know they're, they're probably not 100,000% healthy, so I'm a little bit worried about that. But let's talk about this 49ers defense that has just been playing out of control. I asked our trusty researcher, Patrick, shout out, how Tua and Mike McDaniel do against a top five defense this season. Tua, in the five games he's played against a top five defense this year, Bills, Patriots, etc. he's only put up three touchdowns, you guys. Three. That's it. And three of those games he's had... Not, not super low passer ratings, but low-ish, lower compared to what he usually has. Uh, I'm going 49ers all the way, baby. They're just a fun team to cheer on right now. Uh, okay, it's time to do the math. Cynthia Tyreek Hill is averaging over 145 receiving yards per game on the road this season. Let's set the bar lower, over under 92 and a half yards on Sunday. He's my number one wide receiver for fantasy purposes. This Hell. number is over. I don't usually project so high. My model is conservative like that, but I have more than 92 and a half in large part because of that yards after the catch that we talked about but also the game script I think that they're going to have to be throwing and I do think we see a nice outing from Tua meaning Tyreek will have a big game mm. okay uh Greg let's move to the next one Titans Eagles both teams in first place in their division no surprise the Eagles are favorites at home I'm, I'm just keep on seeing all these clips of this Christmas album she, I love it Kelsey sounds really good all of them Jordan do. Jordan Mailata sounds good. I'm, I'm, oh, <laughs> he hits those notes, baby. What do you like in this game? I like uh, Sorry, the track. Eagles up front to win, and I like them to win by just a field goal. When I look at the running games of these two teams, who's playing better right now? It's the Eagles. It's not Derrick Henry and the Titans. We know about Jalen Hurts, right, in the 10-plus yard plays, the first downs, the 20-yard-plus plays, but we don't hear enough about Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders is fifth in the NFL in rushing yards this year. Only one running back has more 20 yard runs than Miles Sanders. These two runners, Hertz and Sanders, are both in the top eight of first downs this year. And Sanders is making people miss. So it's not just that they have a great offensive line up front. He's passing the eye test. Like, he ranks very high in the get me out of my seat test. You know what I mean? And Miles Sanders, if you're adding him and Hertz together, that's one of the best duos in the league. When I'm adding these two things together, I like revenge in this Whoa. one, 25 to 20. And, of course, by revenge, I mean A.J. Brown. This is his old team. They traded him away during the draft. If you don't remember, then maybe you were living under a rock. It happened, and we talked about it ad nauseum. <laughs> yeah. But I think when you look to see the opportunity here, it's also a great situation. Those downfield passes have been a real problem for the Titans' defense. And while the pressure up front might be good for other teams, this O-line in their Christmas album, they're not going to let that happen. So A.J. Brown will have time. <laughs> to get those deeper passes developed and really catch them. And I think it's like, this is like a, let's see how many times. I, who doesn't love revenge? This is a real oh, revenge game revenge. because he loves oh, to love talk it. trash on the Titans and the Titans miss him. And it's pretty clear. We said it at the time. Like, why Why do this? Why was this necessary? You could have given A.J. Brown a little money, made it work. Uh, he deserved the money at the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give, well, in honor of A.J. Brown, who should have got more, uh, I'm going to give uh, both teams one point from Cynthia's score and take the Philadelphia Eagles 26-21. Uh, mm. to 21. Tennessee could clearly win this game. Derrick Henry could have a 76-yarder. He could take a screen pass to the house. He could, But it would have to be Derrick Henry. And that's a lot to put on 22, as much as he's always carrying the load uh, for the Tennessee Titans. But how much help does he get? Mm -hmm. And how hard is it to get help when Darius Slay and James Bradbury are playing so good as corners for the Philadelphia Eagles? In terms of the entire league, uh, three players have allowed a passer rating all season under 55, and two of them 
play for the Eagles. Uh, again, uh, Henry could do it all, but uh, I think it's a lot to ask. Philly wins it. Um, listen, as much as I would love a meme alert to hear Greg's beautiful children We've got again. the whole season now. It's not going to happen, okay? Listen, we saw the scores Ooh. at the top of the show. I need to start making some moves, baby. I am Ooh. taking the Titans. Oh, boy. And I feel good about it, okay? And let me tell you why I know that Titans beat up on on some not great teams and they struggle against the good teams I believe that they've gone one in four against teams with a winning record but here's the thing all of these games they have kept close they are gritty I heard somebody say I don't know on what show but like Mike Vrabel's just like out for blood he's covered in sweat like this is just <laughs> like a a dirty team. They are getting after it. And the Eagles, Yikes. they haven't. I know, that doesn't sound I super attractive. Watch yeah, Mike Burke. I want to watch that show, whatever the that show is. <laughs> they haven't been as convincing of the, of the, you know, the Eagles that we knew and loved, the undefeated Eagles at the beginning of the season. They, um... They lost to the Commanders. They kept it. They okay. beat the Colts by one point. Yeah. Packers. Jordan Love put up a pretty decent uh, couple of minutes there against the Eagles. I'm, I'm going Titans here. So we heard, oh, Canada. So they'll do better than the Canadian soccer team. Wow. Oh, Why did you, Whoa, so Why did you have to bring that up? Oh my You're God. You're gonna be crawling through the trash like Mike Vrabel, no, apparently. Okay. <laughs> Go USA. Okay. This is where my new allegiance lies. NFL Plus is here, which means no matter where you are, this is how you football with NFL. Plus, watch live local and primetime games on mobile and listen to live game audio now through the Super Bowl. Sign up for the rest of the season with a special offer of $19.99 by going to plus.nfl.com and signing up now. Okay, coming up, less at stake on Sunday than the last time the Chiefs and Bengals met. Kansas City heads to Cincy on a five-game win streak. Can they exact some revenge? Um, Pretty sure it doesn't work that way, but you know, winning would be nice. So don't go anywhere. Burrow back to throw. Here comes the rush. Steps up. Burrow takes off and runs. He's got the first down. Joe Burrow is ready. Rolling out to the right. Burrow throws it toward the back. Yeah. Of the Boy yeah. leaps. He makes the catch. Shotgun snap to Burrow. Throws it into the end zone for Chase. He leaps. Yeah. He's got it. Yeah. Touchdown. You. Two Bengals. That is unbelievable. Yeah, that was wild. Wild, wild, wild. Time for the Drive to Excellence presented by Mercedes-Benz. The Bengals stamped their ticket to the Super Bowl with a win over the Chiefs last year. They are two-and-a-half-point underdogs, which ain't so bad. Cynthia, it was over a touchdown back in January. What do you think of this one? Well, I think it's going to be a three-point win for the Chiefs. So still a close game. Why? Because of Lou Anarumo. What yeah. does he have to do with any of it? The defensive coordinator of the That's Bengals, tough. at least for now. I think he'll probably be a head coach somewhere come next season. Wow. But what he's been able to do is he's been able to craft a response in second half to whatever Patrick Mahomes throws out there. Whatever Andy Reid cooks up, he's able to adapt. Now, he has some issues this season with some injuries that he cannot control, right? Chidabwe. Chidabe Awuzie, there we go. I got it out of my mouth, apparently. He's not there, so that's going to be more difficult. That is a problem for Patrick Mahomes. L losing his head. He lives a little rent-free there. Mm. <laughs> wow. That. Honestly, the, the easiest name, the most fun name to say in the world is Luana Rumo. Luana Rumo! It's great that he's going to get a shot, because remember a few years ago, nobody wanted to take the Bengals defensive coordinator job, and it's like, oh, Luana Rumo, what's going on? And now uh, Luana Rumo's doing great. There's so many reasons to think the Bengals are going to win this game. It's Patrick Mahomes. Oh. It's, it's Patrick. I, I can't do it. 28, 24. Let's just discuss uh, this man because right now, um, those looking at the AFC Championship game, uh, see it, what our friends at NFL Research saw. Mahomes struggling against three or fewer pass rushers. Well, in 2022, his pass rating in those situations is almost 40 points higher. Whatever you do, 15 will adjust. He's going to throw the ball to Travis Kelsey. We've seen this movie so many times. I, I think it's it's a Chiefs win. I, I just The picks are, were too close in the picks, guys. You know, I, I'm going to take Patrick. Oh, what, the, the go safe? This is where I catch up on you. We have seen this movie, and the Bengals won both of those movies. I think they're going to win it again this year, 31-30. to 30. 
I just love Joe Burrow when he's allowed to be Joe Burrow, yeah. and that's throwing on early down. Zach Taylor finally started to let him do it. When you throw on first downs, the running game works better. Even without Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon, the Bengals were the tougher team in Tennessee. They're starting to protect Joe Burrow. I'm starting to buy that this offensive line after three years has finally figured out what they're doing. No one's playing better than Burrow over the last month. Mahomes is right there, but they're close. And I think the wow. defense for the Bengals is ultimately better. Is Wouldn't it be cool if they beat them three straight times? Wouldn't it like, be? Like, if the Chiefs were just the best team in the world, except for that one thing. Somebody's got to have an answer for that guys. one rivalry. It's Let's boring go. when the same team's good all the time. I'm totally with Greg. Yes. Ooh. I am going <laughs> Bengals as well. We are evenly split, 30 to 27 over the Chiefs. Like you were saying, they got the job done against the Titans, who, by the way, they were the underdogs in that game, without Jamar Chase, without Joe Mixon. And I want to take you back to last season, one of these games against the Chiefs. Jamar Chase had the craziest game that any of us have seen. He had 266 receiving yards in week 17 against Casey, a single game rookie record. And I don't know if you guys saw this on Twitter this week. Justin Reed, uh, chief safety, said everybody's getting locked down in this game. And Jamar was like, all right, I don't think so. <laughs> and called Justin Reed tuna in a can, which took me about 10 minutes to decipher. But I think I figured it out. Bengals or cats, tuna in a can. He doesn't even have to catch oh. the fish. He's just eating tuna in a can. Wow. I thought he just meant like a mediocre snack, you know? That or that, that work too. both offensive, okay? <laughs> go Bengals, go. Let's do some more math. Cynthia, Joe Burrow had 250 yards against the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game. The magic number this week is 292. You going more or you going less? I'm going less than that against the Chiefs for a number of reasons, but not the least of which is they need their run game to work a little bit better to make sure that they have more ball control. So if they're going to win, if they're going to upset them, keep Patrick Mahomes off the field. It sounds stupid, but it actually is a very true thing to say. He does get Jamar Chase back, which does help, but he hasn't been throwing downfield as often as last season. So, there we go. Okay, I think Jamar Chase is going to ball out this week. Okay, let's stick in the AFC West. We just talked about the Chiefs. How about Raiders Chargers? It was a five-point game in week one. This game is basically a toss-up. Sin, go first and give me time to think about it. Honestly, I've been back and forth on this game all week. I kind of did too. I have a one-point win, but for the Chargers, 27 to 26 in this matchup. Obviously, we know what's going on with this Chargers defense, and we can say it. You can run it back from last season, and I say run on purpose because you can run against this Chargers defense. And you just saw Josh Jacobs run for, you know, conservatively 357,000 yards <laughs> last game. So when I'm watching this there he one goes. and I'm thinking about what Josh McDaniels doing, he's like going to say, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's not have it look exactly the same, but let. Let's let the same guy do kind of the same thing in this one because the matchup does work out in our favor. However, I will say Justin Herbert against that secondary. Just gets it done in the last second. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, both defenses are lousy. The, the Chargers defense is so lousy. You had to highlight Josh Jacobs even though you didn't pick him. You wanted to pick the Raiders. I'm going to pick the Raiders. <laughs> Let's go. Raiders, I'm back on board. 29 to 20. I don't feel that strong about it. But I do feel like this run defense. No one does. It's one point. Right. For the Chargers. Like one you're point coming game. after me for one point? Okay. I just said this is the thing that I'm excited about is watching Jacobs run through the Chargers like Nick Chubb did. <laughs> Can you uh, confirm for me, yeah. Cynthia? You don't need to. I know this is. Go ahead. The Chargers have given up more yards per carry on design runs than any team in the history of the NFL what? this year. And they'll say, well, we'd rather give up five and a half yards per carry uh, on the ground than give up seven in the air. It doesn't matter. You're giving up everything. And this Raiders offense has more answers. I don't think they have to work as hard to score points, whereas the Chargers have to progress the ball down the field very slowly. They're missing Corey Lindsley at center. I think that's a big deal for the Chargers. I think they lose. Well, the thing is, you're talking about, we've seen these teams play already. And we yes. saw Khalil Mack have those three sacks and a forced fumble. This, this Joey Chargers, Bosa was in that game. Yes, Derwin James, who I would like to discuss as well, is playing well in this defense. In terms of, if we're saying which defense is worse, the, the Las Vegas Raiders have a lot of <laughs> the highest passer rating in the entire NFL and now in comes Justin Herbert he gets the play in Las Vegas there's defensive playmakers that we can at least discuss on the Chargers team on the Raiders I, I just I, I still believe defense exists and it has a value yes the, the Chargers can't stop the run oh well that happens every single week mm -hmm. so uh, it's Josh Jacobs can't do that ever. Mm -hmm. he, he, it's 
Chargers win. We, we have the biggest win by far by three whole points. I'm going uh, <laughs> Chargers as well. I've got them Ooh. winning. Uh, do I have the Chargers? Yeah, I have the Chargers 30 to 27. And like you said, defense on both sides has been pretty yeah, terrible. Yeah, and I know that the yeah, Seahawks yeah. Uh, lost to the Raiders last week, but our guy Gino put up <laughs> over 320 passing yards. He got three touchdowns and <clears throat> an interception. Justin Herbert last week threw three touchdowns. This passing offense on the Chargers could get things done. Uh, and this one, Okay, some big games to talk about in the NFC East. Cowboys, Giants, Commanders, all three holding wild card spots right now. All three trying to keep pace with the Eagles. Can Taylor Heineke head into the bye week on a four-game win streak? I did not think that I'd be saying that at the beginning of the season. Let me tell you. Don't go anywhere. Is he buying new sneakers this weekend or what? <laughs> Great day. Back on the field. Bop, 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 Clock, 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 clock. Have fun today, dog. Hey, a lot more meat on the bone. This game ain't over. Let's go. That's how you run, dog. That's how you run. Good job. Sanders pushes. He's in. Touchdown, Miles Sanders. I got eight touchdowns, man. I know you've never had to tackle a big running back like Brian Robinson Jr. out of the backfield. Get out of my way. Mic'd up is the greatest invention of all time. Am Agreed. I wrong? Yep. No, Great. I'm not. Uh, Brian Robinson's teammates loved the performance last week. I loved it. I love them against the Giants. But, Greg, I will let you pick this one first. I'm going to pick the Giants. I think their losing streak ends here. I have them winning 17 to 16. There's a lot of words you know, you could use to describe Taylor Heineke. People have said gritty Flashy. and feisty and swaggy. Dirty. I'm going to use another word. <laughs> Lucky. No, he is the luckiest quarterback in the league. He leads the league in turnover-worthy play percentage, according to PFF, by a lot. So people are dropping his interceptions, and they're not picking up his fumbles. But you know who's a team and a defense that can cause some chaos? Ah. It's the Giants and Wink Martindale. I think this is the week the luck runs out he has some turnovers and the Giants win a close by one score by, by one. one I mean th these teams are the exact same you true very true well I also have a one-point win right. oh, no. in this <laughs> match of 22 to 21 same winner for the Giants but I want to talk about two guys did you go to Alabama do you play defensive tackle for the no. Washington Commanders are you good at stopping the run <laughs> that's really where I think they have a lot of success to run Payne Jonathan Allen it's really fun to watch both of them especially on this interior and I can point this out because you know where Saquon Barkley really likes to do his damage on the outside so it's not that big of a deal and they can mm. get around okay. and go around the edge but I do want to give them some shine there because I don't think enough people talk about interior defenders you know that's your love thing that? it, I like the, the dirty guys in the trenches, you know? <laughs> dirty, sweaty, <laughs> bloody dirty guys in the trenches. <laughs> Grimy. Yeah, what's going on? I, I, because you guys, I can't, I can't. Uh, oh, the, the one point win Katie. thing. Oh. No, I, let's get a two point win. Okay. <laughs> yeah. oh, there <laughs> the we Giants. go. I've got the Giants in this one oh, wow. uh, 19 to 17. And like Cynthia mentioned, uh, De'Ron Payne and, and Jonathan Allen are just avoid it. Saquon, don't deal with it. Throw the ball. To Saquon. Let's look back to the start of the season when things were going great. Uh, they were throwing Saquon the ball behind the line of scrimmage, short passes. And in weeks three for three through five, he had 12 plus yards after catch average on those receptions during that time frame. Since then, the only time was week nine against Houston. I, I know he's the real threat. He's the only real threat on the team, but let's find a way to get Saquon the ball in space that doesn't use a rocket. Mm. Uh, dimes can run the ball too, but just stay away from those guys. They're, they're too good in there. Um, I don't think I've ever felt better about a lone at a on this show. Ooh. Look at those scores. Oh, That's not giving confidence, Canada. people. Okay, Your favorite. 21 to 17. Come
Commanders all the way. Listen, sometimes we talk about vibes a lot on this show. Yep. Commanders <laughs> all about vibes right now. They are faking it until they mm. make it right now. Taylor Heineke is buying sneakers of the opponent's colors after every single game. I like that. I actually love it. It is getting into everybody's head. The other team, by the way, started so hot. I was Brian Dable for Halloween. I wore a ball cap on my head for seven hours. I love the Giants, but they are not the Giants that we saw at the beginning of the season. Daniel Jones has as many interceptions in the last two games as he has had in the first nine games this season. And we were talking about this on commercial break. Taylor Heineke, he gets a little incentive for each of those wins, baby. That's what's funding this sneaker situation. Uh, check back in on the scores, the leaderboard next okay. week. Because I'm making okay. some okay. moves this week, baby. Cynthia, are you ready for some more? Math. Do Take the math. <laughs> it's had horrible Do games the last two weeks for some reason. Will he have more than 71 rushing yards against the Commanders? What are you going? Well, I gave a lot of compliments to the interior of that defensive front, but I think the outside, an area where Saquon's rushing about 70% of the time, is where he's going to find some success. So when I'm looking to see, will it be more than 71 and a half? Yes, the answer is yes. Ooh, it will be more man. back on track. Brian Dable will need to figure this one out because, of course, that front is very good. Keep Daniel Jones away from trouble so that he can throw the ball. He's bouncing back. Okay, it is time for a quick picks. We got a couple of games here. Greg Colts, Cowboys, nobody is going out on a limb here. You've got the Cowboys by 19, your biggest blowout of the year. What? Yeah, I don't even feel like that's enough. This is, uh, huh? remember how the Colts started, you know, trying a little bit harder after Jeff Saturday got there? That's over with. The reality <laughs> of the next five weeks have hit them, and they've got Dakota Rain Prescott coming into town. Oh, wait, they're in Dallas. It's going to be a bloodbath. If my name was Dakota Rain, I wouldn't shorten it to Dak. <laughs> I wouldn't even leave the house. What a name. Oh, he is playing out of his mind right now. Every throw he makes is on point. He's, this is like peak Dak, and he could be one of the best players in the league down the stretch. I feel like Dakota Rain is a perfect like wrestling name. Like imagine so here good. comes Dakota Rain. Oh no! <laughs> It's actually a fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Lyons Jags the second highest over under of the week at 51 and a half, but I am not asking you over under. I'm asking you to pick it. What are you going with? Well, people could do like Cynthia. They could do the math and see that I've, I've got the over on oh this one. Because I, hope, I hope you like points. I hope you like points wow. because this will be an absolute score fest. And let's talk about the Jags. You saw Trev dice up the Baltimore Ravens, especially <laughs> in the fourth quarter hitting every single ball, and people are thinking, oh, this is all Zay Jones, but I was talking with a brilliant football mind not too long ago, her name is Cynthia Freeland, hey. about how much Marlon Humphrey was playing in the slot. It really hindered Christian Kirk. I think playing against this Lions defense, he gets completely unlocked, and up and down the field they go. The Jags win it at the buzzer, 35-30. Sin, I love that you're such a disgruntled Lions fan that you, even when you take him by a win, you can't ever do it by a lot. Like, it's always just like, I guess, like, the eyes crossed. Can't watch the I game. A oh. one point win. I don't know, but that's not the game that I want to talk to you about. Packers Bears. The Bears are home dogs. Packers favored by three and a half. Can the Bears cover in this one at least? Well, I think so. I think it's about a two point win, which is about Whoa. right for me. 23 to 21. Why? You got Justin Fields back, and you can run on this Packers defense. When I'm looking to see what's going on in this game overall, both teams are proficient in the run game. So we've obviously seen Aaron Jones be really helpful. Even A.J. Dillon get on in the action, and, you know, he's he, he, last game. And then when you, the other side, David Montgomery has been great, but really it's all about Justin Fields and his ability on his legs. And I was stuttering because I was going to talk about A.J. Dillon announcing that he, his his wife was pregnant. Oh, to BC, so I follow um, him. This got a BC so. reference. Here Who was it, Alan Lazard, this week that was like, uh, Aaron Rodgers got to renew his contract twice a year, and that time is uh, coming up. Did you guys see that? <laughs> okay. NFL Knockout, it? presented by Caesar Sportsbook, it is a free-to-play game on NFL.com. Yeah. Win an exclusive hmm. VIP trip to experience the 2023 Pro Bowl, the 2023 NFL Draft or Super Bowl 57 Weekly. Answer 10 questions about Sunday's games and top the leaderboard to win a trip of a lifetime. Visit NFL.com slash knockout to sign up, play, and win. You can be as happy as those people right there. <laughs> okay, there he is. Mike White's wife came up to him after the game last week and said, who are you? Can he do it again? against the Vikings. He was like, oh, oh yeah. look at that. Recent, like, okay. his wife so is shocked how good he is. Don't go anywhere. Is he pulling us a kiss?
The rookie, Sauce Gardner. JJ. Throws <laughs> left, intercepted by Sauce Gardner. And he is celebrating behind the end zone. He caught it! That's one of the most cold-blooded receptions you're ever going to see in your life. You like that one? Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner in the perfect position. Are you kidding me with that catch, JJ? Somebody get a handle on him. Picked off by Sauce Gardner. The rookie sprinting down to the end zone. JJ! Obviously, matchup to keep an eye on. I know Patrick is fired up about Justin Jefferson. Aren't we all at this point? But will he do enough to get the Vikings a win on Sunday? Absolutely, the Minnesota Ooh. Vikings will get a win on Sunday. And it's because Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins have seen this before. They've played top five defenses, especially the top five scoring defenses, because they played three consecutive games against them. But unlike the Cowboys and the Bills and the Patriots, pressure percentages are at 29 and 27% according to Next Gen Stats. Dallas far away leads the league in that stat. I'm saying all that because the, even without Christian Darisol, just in terms of the pressure that the Jets provide, it's not going to be enough to limit Justin Jefferson the entire game, especially if they leave him singled up with sauce the whole time. I feel confident in the Minnesota Vikings 20 to 7. Plus, you just never pick the Jets. You're back to being a hater. I'm not, I'm not a, I picked them I, once. I just I, I like the, the team that's, that's that's good. Interesting. Just saying. It's interesting that you always just say that on the other side of the Jets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I do. <laughs> Guilty. Cynthia. I. Oh, you're doing the skull thing. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Oh, Got it. Say it. Okay. Perfect. Oh. Got it. Perfect. <laughs> Great. I'm picking the Jets. I have a Jets upset here in Minnesota. The score is 23 to 22. Super convincing, but it is mm. still a Jets win in this one. Why? Because of Sauce Gardner. It's kind of the exact opposite Love thing. It. Here's the thing. Sauce lines up kind of in the same spot, and Jefferson only lines up kind of not the same spot, so they're not going to see each other a ton unless they decide to move Sauce around a bit. You know who's the best in man coverage? I know who you the know what is. happens? <laughs> you know what happens when the Jets? That you know how they are getting pressure by only rushing four, and they're really good at doing that. So that means they can drop more people back in coverage, which means it's going to be Justin Jefferson v the world. And DJ Reed's mm. got this. He's got this, bro. And Mike White, I love him too. I also know who the number one guy at beating man coverage is. He's so Listen. <laughs> I want more <laughs> Cynthia singing in this. Yeah. Ah. I love I love Mike White too because he makes the Jets watchable and I like to watch football. Go. And the Mike White that we saw a week ago can win a lot of games. I think he did more in terms of big time throws than people really gave him credit for. Yes, it's against the Bills. I mean, against the Bears, but it doesn't matter. When you're making plays outside the pocket, he showed good velocity. His timing was perfect. His time to throw was the lowest of any Jets quarterback all year, lower than Zach Wilson has had his whole career. He's letting these wide receivers shine, and there's so much time to shine against this Vikings defense. They play off coverage. They allow receivers to get open, and Cynthia agrees with me, and that always makes me feel good. Um, I also agree with he had the quickest time to throw, but also he doubled their number of deep touchdown pat in the same game. So they just, they got the game plan right. That's why his wife was Double like, two. Oh, yeah. I didn't uh, know you had that in you, Against Mike. the 85 Bears. Too. Okay, I had no okay. idea. Uh, I'll tell you who Mike White is. He joined Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson as the only quarterbacks to have 300 passing yards, three plus touchdowns, 140 plus passer rating in a game in 2022. So yes, who are you? I saw something earlier in this week. This is my favorite tweet of the week. Can we pull it up? please, so that I can read it. Uh, Andrew Kramer says, Kirk Cousins says, a grill is oh, yeah. in the works. <laughs> My agent has probably gotten six emails from dentists all the way from Canada. I'm ashamed. Can I just say that? Hi. Saying they can get it done. And Greg responds with, Jets by 13. You know what I call this? <laughs> Bulletin board material. And I think that the Jets love this kind of stuff. I want to flash back to a couple mm. of weeks ago when the Jets beat the Packers. Sauce had the cheese hat on his head. Yes. They feed off of this kind of stuff. Come on, Jets 21-20. I mean, if Kirk Cousins getting a grill doesn't spell the end of this fun little Viking season, it's, I don't it's know over. what does. It's done. You can't love that. Kirk doing hokey stuff has been like the only consistent thing. <laughs> this has been every single week. Go back week. to barbecuing. That's the Kirk that we know. Okay, Greg, Broncos, Ravens, we are contractually <laughs> obligated to talk about every game. So I'll ask you, how big will the win be for the Ravens? It's got to be so big that I wanted to say it at the end of the show for my write this down and the producers thought it was too boring. But you know what? 
you can still be right. It's gonna be way over eight and a half oh. points. I think it's 16, it's 19. This defense, I still believe in as one of the best defenses in the league. I know they've given up some late leads, but that was mostly early in the season. They still are good up front, good at the second level, good in the secondary. They're gonna trounce these Broncos. I think you need to switch it to 29-10 if it's 19. Yeah. I'm just throwing out numbers. Got it. Okay. I don't know just how to do sure. the math. I'm just throwing out I'm just, I'm just helping you out. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you out. Cynthia and I have the same score. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, twinsies. Okay, uh, speaking of contractually obligated Steelers Falcons, I am going Steelers here. I think I have the biggest win out of all of us. Wow, 21 we to 17. Uh, we do all have the Steelers. Wow. I don't I don't think the Falcons have covered once in the last six games. Steelers have won the last two out of three since their bye. And albeit small, Kenny Pickett is slowly starting to improve. Since the bye, I think he's been before the bye, he was getting sacked like six times a game. That has definitely gone down. Also, Mike Tomlin, he's never had a losing season in his career and they are currently at four and seven you gotta start making some moves here Mike Tomlin I'm going Steelers here um, moving on to this next one Cynthia I know listening to us pick these games uh, picking these last two games has been so much fun so I'll let you in on the action Seahawks Rams uh, you're welcome Oh. oh, thanks. Um, so Seahawks 25 to 18 for the Rams. Hey. We'll talk about Ken Walker because we all, we, we, you know, Kirk Cousins, we said, did some wonky stuff. But another Michigan State grad, he's actually doing some amazing stuff. He's really making a strong case to be your offensive rookie of the year. I don't know who's going to win this one, but he certainly has a lot of numbers, yards after the catch, yards after contact, to be able to make that argument. And I don't know what Patrick's laughing about, but I like it. Well, a, a Michigan fan to be unnamed has requested me to ask you what Bowl True. Michigan State is playing in this season. But, but I don't know. I don't care what bowl game they're playing in. I just know that he <laughs> Listen, we, we don't have a lot of nice things in mid-Michigan, okay? They, you they, you got know, we, we got Ken Walker, and we got Kirk Cousins. Kenneth Walker the third. I love just saying it so regal like that. Uh, okay, the last time Brady played the Saints, he won. The Bucks were 2-0. The bad news is they've won only oh, three man. games since that. But, hey, that's still good enough for first place in the NFC South. Um, Patrick, did I sell you on that? No. Do you want to watch the game now? Okay. It's Monday Night Football. It. Over under coming up next. Don't get it. <laughs> Get your game day started Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern with NFL Game Day Morning. Good morning, you good-looking fella. It's a potential Super Bowl preview, people, when Miami travels to San Francisco. We'll let you know why Tua and the Dolphins could be in for a long night against the Niners' dominant D. It's an AFC Championship rematch between the Chiefs and Bengals. Cincinnati is heading to the Super Bowl! Kurt breaks down why KC should be on upset alert again Sunday in Cincy. And the Giants host the Red Hot Commanders with playoff positioning on the line. Mooch will explain what New York needs to do to stop its two-game skid. All that and much more Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Oh, yeah, we'll see you bright and early on Sunday. It is time for Over Under. Let's start with Saints Bucks. Over Under is 40 and a half. I've got the Bucks winning 21 to 17, but that's only 38 points. So I am going under. This game doesn't really scream offense to me. Oh, point, I feel point, so point, good point. about this. I have it 17, 10 bucks for what it's worth, but I feel so much better with the under than I do uh, for either team in this game. The Bucks' offense is a mess. The Saints are healthier on defense than they've been in a long time. The Bucks' defense has really been great or good all year. And the Saints, are, I, I couldn't feel stronger, Cynthia. I can't believe you would disagree with this. Uh, oh, you can't believe I would disagree with you? No, Have you not one. been working with me just for like... this one. I just feel <laughs> so confident I don't feel as they're usually twinsies I, I mean let's be honest my score is 24 to 19 so it's not like I'm sitting here being like oh my gosh 43 whole points that's so much more but <laughs> more I remember when they played last year on Monday night football or Sunday night and it was nine if, if we I have, I have a question if they score more than 40 and a half points can you do push-ups? Like waddle. Sure, but then what are you going to do? Waddle, waddle. Uh, you you name it. Okay, wear some Tulane green wave. We, we have Perfect. to use that promo of Cynthia at least five times in the show next week. <laughs> yeah. Five. No at less the end than of that. every block. No more bumps. Yeah. No bump <laughs> it's video. Just it's just Cynthia. Cynthia's twirl. I love that. Uh, when we did the meeting, I was like, oh, God, I'm not the over, am I? And I came up with 40 points. 
So just there. Oh, thank God. Just there. Because, like Greg, I, I saw these two teams, considering the state of their respective offenses, we just we can't get there. I, I don't think that the Bucks or the Saints uh, have what's necessary to, to reach that number. Right there you now. go. Okay. Uh, this next one, Browns, Texans, over, under at 46 and a half. I'm not just under. I am away under. I've got 35 points in this one. Obviously, Deshaun's first game back. We heard some stories about practice, a lot of drop passes. I think it might take a minute, if ever, for this team to, to gel. You've got the Texans winning, too. I do. Yes, I do. I do like that. Uh, I'm going under. I don't expect Deshaun Watson to play any better than Jacoby Brissett did. Uh, I'm rooting for the Texans in this game. For this week only, the Texans, you're America's team. There you don't go, let Texans. Us down. Come on, baby. Am I, am I doing this again by myself? Oh. I, oh. This is pretty much just all Nick Chubb. Have you seen the Texans stop anyone on the run? Mm. Nope. Oh, Nick Chubb's. Oh, that's why. Over. We do love it. How about a revenge game for, like, ruining our franchise, Texans? I, I, I already picked the Texans once this year. I, you can't do it again. Yeah, I can't do it again. I got burned. I'm ultimately probably going to lose to Cynthia because of that game. But, yeah, this is an under uh, for me as well because I watched Kyle Allen play, and I thought that that might be uh, it for having to watch Kyle Allen play, but apparently we're going <laughs> to nope. keep doing this. We're going to try it again. So, yeah, under. Okay, coming up after the break, we are going to hit right this down. Some stuff that we are feeling pretty strongly about. Oh, is somebody picking something with the Cowboys? Is this a little bit of a tease? The Vikings? It's always a tease. It's hard Patriots, bro? No, they A didn't. candle in that cold Dunk coat of rain. <laughs> there they are. Oh, whack a mole? <laughs> Want to stay up to date on the playoff race? Just tell Siri, show me football standings. Got a man there, John Bates, touchdown, Washington! Good for the touchdown! Marvin Jones! The two-point conversion is good! How good is that? Aaron Wilson with a catch-and-run! 55-yard touchdown! He gets, oh, he's got it! Touchdown! Oh, yeah. That's just, hey, DJ, I trust you, go get it. Scrambling to his left, throws a touchdown, Miami! A two-point conversion, this is the game. Caught! It's good! Kelsey stretches out for the end zone! Touchdown! Jawan Jennings on the ricochet! Oh, what a catch by Njoku! Touchdown! A.J. Brown! Hands off to Jacobs. Burst through the hole! Nobody's gonna catch him! Ball game! That's the ball game. All right, it is time for Write This Down before we go. These are things that we are feeling pretty confident about. This morning in our meeting, I said, I want Jamar Chase over. I don't even care what the number is. So this is the first time that I'm seeing said number. <laughs> Jamar Chase over 73 and a half receiving yards. No problem against the Chiefs. He balled out last year in this very game. I'm excited for this one. I like it when Rachel and I are parking our car in the same garage. Woo! Let's go. I've got uh, Joe Burrow over two and a half touchdowns. I just want to live in a world where the Chiefs can do everything yep. except beat the Bengals. It would be the third time in a row. A lot of talk about the Bengals secondary. Can they defend? How about all these Chiefs rookie cornerbacks going up against this group? I don't think they're going to get it done. I think the Bengals win again and Crypt maybe set up a fourth matchup in the playoffs. That would be fun. They're kryptonite. That would be fun. Um, well, if I'm going to pick the Lions, I'm going to go all of the way in. So, yes. Amon Ross St. Brown, I think you're going to have at least Seven receptions. I'm going all the way in. Come on, Motor City Kitties. Please do not let me down. The Jags have a suspect secondary, and Amon Ra is really good. So I would say that even if I wasn't a Lions fan or even if I was a Lions fan that was disgruntled, which I actually am. So over six and a half. Motor City Kitties. Motor City Kitties. Let's see. Greg and I both texted finally. you on Thanksgiving, and we were like, we're all oh. the way in. We're Lions oh. fans now. Forget about it. You, you want to talk about motivation? Tell uh. the Lions that Cynthia is Tell ready for this Let's go. Tell them I sent you. Let's go. Tell them I sent you. Do it. Do it. Tunnel <laughs> levitating. Uh, Never happens. My write this down is that Kirk Cousins will have over <laughs> 250 and a half yards against the New York Jets because they've only had two games at home where he didn't hit this number. One was that game against the Cowboys. We'll just throw that one out. And then game flow against the, the Cardinals. It didn't work out. Kirk's going to hit 250. It feel great about it. You know what you're putting out into the universe? A post-game interview with Kirk Cousins with a grill on. Perhaps it from Canada. absolutely happened. Oh. And we can blame Kirk. Are we ready? for this? Nobody I'm wants. blaming you if it happens. Guys, enjoy Nobody. week 13. We will see you next week.